Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. My name is Kuhu Sharkar and it has been a long time that I could not make any video about new criticism. So today I am going to talk about John Crow Ransom who was very much famous new critics. Right? So let's start. Here is the picture of John Crow Ransom. Let's know more about him and his concepts. John Crow Ransom was born in 1888 and died in 1974, was an American educator, scholar, literary critic, poet, essayist and editor. He is considered to be a founder of the New Criticism School of Literary Criticism. As a faculty member of Kenyan College, he was the first editor of the widely regarded Kenyan Review. So, in my previous video, when I talked about New Criticism, I already told you about the journal of New Criticism and there I told about the Kenyan Review. So, he was the editor of the journal. Please make this uh, point. Highly respected as a teacher and mentor to a generation of accomplished students, he also was a prize-winning poet and essayist. He entered Vanderbilt University in Nashville at the age of 15, graduating first in his class in 1909. He attended Christ College, Oxford, where he read grades, taking a second class degree. Then, Ransom taught Latin for one year at the Hot, uh, Hotkiss School alongside Samuel Claggett Chew. He was then appointed to the English department at Vanderbilt University in 1914. During the First World War, he served as an artillery, artillery officer in France. After war, he returned to Vanderbilt and he was a founding member of Fugitive. So, please note this down that he was the founder, founding member of Fugitives, a southern literary group of 16 writers that functioned primarily as a kind of poetry workshop and include Donald Davidson, Ellen Tate and Robert Payne Warren. So I already told you about that journal Fugitives in my uh, previous video and he was the founder of the journal Fugitives. His first volume poems uh, Poems about God, which was published in 1919 and was praised by Robert Frost and Robert Graves. Fugitives are Donald Davidson, Alan Tate, and Robert Payne Warren. So there are also other members, but they are famous. He is John Florensum is famous for his ontological criticism. So you have to make it. Uh, note down that he is famous for ontological criticism and he is famous for his essay criticism inc and where he gave the concept how to be a proper critic so in criticism inc he gave the concept that how you can be a proper critic then he is also famous for his poetry uh, for his work poetry a note on ontology so poetry a note on ontology where he talked about ontology here uh, where he talked about three types of poems and the interaction between structure and texture so we are going to talk about this let's see uh, the essay criticism inc Criticism Inc. was published in 1937 is an important document in the history of literary criticism like preface to lyrical ballad, bringing together in one place all the distinctive aims, attitudes and assumptions of the American new criticism. So in the uh, essay Criticism Inc. he bringing the concept, the aim, the main focus of the new criticism. The essay envisages an objective or ontological ontological mean what exists so i said that he uh, was famous for his ontological criticism and in this essay he envisages objective and ontological ontological mean what exists what exists in the text you should only look at this uh, in my previous video video i already told you that uh, what the new critics do they only focus on the text on the context and the form the, they 
very much rejected the historical and biographical background so ontological criticism means what exists what exists you should only focus on on that so uh, ontological criticism that is the product of rigorous discipline collaborative effort in the elucidation and evaluation of literary text ransom believes that criticism must become more scientific precise and systematic so here he believed that criticism must be more scientific and more precise and systematic so in this uh, essay he talked about this so let's know more about this the criticism ink has five parts but i only took those parts which are important for your exam point of view so first is that he here said the opening part speaks about the business of criticism the business of criticism business has no pejorative connotation nobody has spoken anything about the proper business of criticism so here he said in simple word i explained that he said that if you are not a batsman if you don't know cricket if you are not a batsman or a bowler you cannot criticize you cannot give give your comment about batsman or a cricketer if you are not a singer if you don't know how to sing you cannot comment how to sing how uh, anybody that how she should or he should sing therefore if you are not a poet if you are not a true critic if you are not uh, know how to write you cannot uh, judge anybody that uh, this is that so you cannot judge if you are not a poet so he said that uh, so he said that if you want to be a critic you should have to be a poet or you uh, you have to uh, go through such uh, stand uh, standard uh, so he said that the people who speak about criticism are for the most part amateur so you are amateurs these amateurs have not been trained to criticism so you are not trained that how to criticize then how can you be a good critics critic and he said that have not been a trained to criticism and they have undertaken the job of being critics because it needs no specific qualification they are output what they call criticism is not the real criticism so um he said if you are not a good singer if you don't know how to sing you cannot uh, judge uh, give judgment of any other singing like that if you are not a uh, if you are not a trained critics you cannot judge anybody anybody's work so he said that people take it um, simply easily or people take it under undertake it the uh, undertake the job of criticism so there are not uh, no um, specific qualification of a critic that they should follow therefore people, uh, people take it easily and they just uh, give um, pass their comment and uh, they said it that it is a true criticism so it is not a true criticism so in this uh, essay he Uh, said that how you should be a good critic and what you should follow and who are the uh, true critics according to ransom there are three types of trained performers who appear to possess the talent needed for a critic so according to him there are three uh, trained performers who can be good critic and who are they first the artist artist mean the poet or the uh, artist who can create something who have their work who can who can write they can be a, a true critic they can judge other works so ransom seems to believe that the artist is a good judge of his art he should uh, know good art when he sees it so he should know the, that what a good work is but the artist they are also loose false like but the artist understanding of work is intuitive and not uh, dialectical he cannot very well explain his theory and artists are better equipped to speak about the technical rather than the theoretical nature of the of their work uh, so there are also loose false
then he said the philosopher so first he said the artist can be a good critic then he said the philosopher can be a good critic but he said he should know all about the function of fine art so a philosopher should know all the function of uh, fine arts but the philosopher is apt to see a lot of good wood or and no trees his theory is very general and his familiarity with particular works will not be intimate the handsome generations uh, generalization he makes are based more on other generalization not based on acute study of particulars so there also he said that a philosopher can be a good uh, critic but he also uh, don't know that he also make generalization a handsome generalization but not go in depth or not based on accurate study of particulars he is more uh, generalized not specific so then he said the university teacher of literature can be a good critic the university teacher can be a good critic but there are also uh, some loopholes so he said the university teacher should be the very professional we need to take charge of the critical activity so a university teacher should be the very professional because he is a teacher and he already know his subject so he can be a good critic but unfortunately he pro proves to be a greater disappointment than the poet or the philosopher because we expect more of him and professor of literature are learned but not critical men so he gave the advantage and both the disadvantage so he said that they are not a good critical men and their professional moral is very low and they have mastered all the techniques of escaping from their responsibility and it has become easy for a professor to spend lifetime compla compiling the data of literature without ever passing a literary, literary judgment nevertheless it is the it is from the professors that we should expect intelligent standard of criticism so he said that the artist can be a good critic and the the philosopher can be a good critic and the university teacher can be a good critic but they also have loopholes but they can overcome it but the other persons the other people who make comment or make judgment cannot be a good critic because they don't know how to write they himself uh, themselves don't write anything so how can be they how can they be a good critic so then the proper set of criticism is in the universities so he said that criticism must become more scientific and uh, more scientific or precise systematic so in previous uh, slide i uh, already told you this means that it must be, be uh, it must be developed by the collective sustained effort of learned person so it must be a collective and sustained effort of a learned person like the artist is a learned person the philosopher uh, is a learned person the university teacher must be a learned person right therefore its proper place in the university so criticism's proper place is in the universities where the subjects it taught criticism is not an exact science so it is not an exact science like physics and chemistry it is not a nearly exact science uh, psychology sociology economics are also not exact sciences so he said the psychology sociology and economics or are also not the exact sciences it is better to call them systematic studies so you can call them a systematic studies but they are but these have improved imme immeasurably since they were taken over by the universities and the same looks possible so if you uh, try to go to do research they said that research should be sci uh, scientific it does not mean that only science student or uh, do research or only literature student have to go to the laboratory right it means that you have to do it in a systematic way so the therefore he also said that you have to do it in a systematic way it is not mean that you have to do some experiment so and you you should have to train to do critics uh, criticism 
द सेम लुक्स पॉसिबल फॉर क्रिटिसिजम टू द इंटरप्राइज ऑफ क्रिटिसिजम मास देन बी हैंडल बाई प्रोफेशनल एंड नॉट बाई एम एच यूर सो ही सेट द इट मास्ट बी हैंडल बाई द प्रोफेशनल रैनसम से इज दैट इट इज बेटर टू आस्क वाट इज क्रिटिस वाट इज क्रिटिसिजम नॉट सो ही सेट दैट ही जस्ट रिजेक्टेड दैट वाट इज Uh, not criticism. Therefore, you can understand what is real criticism, right? Instead of asking what is criticism, so he said that what is not, what is criticism not? Instead of asking what is criticism, because the act of criticism is now notoriously arbitrary and undefined. So he said before him, he said that there is no uh, particular uh, scale. that you can do your criticism so it is like arbitrary and undefined anybody can judge uh, pass their uh, comment anybody can uh, do criticism they are not qualified enough to do criticism but they are making their comment right so it is arbitrary and undefined undefined so you first have to um, make sure that what is not criticism then you can understand that what is real criticism so it is not done by professors or the students but they are by the writers with perfectly indeterminate qualifications and loose compositions that appear as review of books so he said that that it is uh, not uh, done by the professors or their students but the writers who perfectly indeterminate indeterminate qualification and loose of compositions they are doing the review of the books so ransom list uh, six more items that can kept out of criticism so he said that uh, he is uh, list six more uh, six items where you can keep the criticism uh, out kept out that what can uh, you cannot call criticism what what they are they are first personal resignation so you cannot See, mention the impact of a work upon the critic as a reader. So, um, you, he said that you cannot be biased. Personal uh, resignation, you cannot be biased. Mention the impact of a work upon the critic as a reader. Mean the uh, effective fallacy I had told you before, and criticism must be objective. It must cite the nature of the object rather than its effect. the effective fallacy okay and on the reader and it is hardly criticism to assert that the work is moving exciting entertaining pitiful great admirable beautiful aristotle himself had committed that the mistake of speaking about effect about the effect of a tragedy on the spectators means catharsis the board way directors who follow a crude method of placing reliable persons among the audience to count the number of laughs are are not very different from aristotle so he said that the how it affects the reader you cannot um, judge through it okay so your uh, the you as a reader and how the work impact you cannot be true judge uh, true criticism then such concerns on the effect of a work on the audience deny the autonomy of the artist so he said that you if you uh, see that the how it affects the audience it deny the autonomy of the artist so you cannot go with it then synopsis or paraphrase sometimes people don't go through the work they just read the synopsis or paraphrases and then they make judgment so it is also reject uh, uh, deniable so it this is the method adopted in schools and women's clubs this is essays of the systematic exercise so he said that uh, you have should reject the synopsis or uh, the paraphrasing and um, through this you can can't make judgment your judgment then historical studies you know that uh, new criticism uh, reject the historical studies or the author's background these have a wide range that include studies of the general literary background and author's biography with special reference to autobiographical evidences in the work itself 
bibliographical items the citation of literary originals and analogs and therefore what in general is called comparative literature such studies may be stimulating and but if done superficially the comparison may become per uh, perfunctory and mechanical so he said that they rejected the historical background and the author's biography author's background and if you try to do comparison it is fruitless then linguistic studies linguistic studies he said that one second linguistic studies he said that under the studies the meaning of idioms and words are explained allusion are identified it is in so he said that familiarity with the language does not make a man good critic through it and may save him from damaging errors so he said that you cannot go with the language under the studies the meaning of idioms and words are explained and allusions are identified and familiarity with the language does not make a man good critic that you know the language it does not make you the good critic uh, through it and make save uh, may save him from damaging errors then moral studies the reviewers may apply a particular moral standard which he likes and is uh, familiar with so if i believe in something if uh, my morality and your morality cannot be same so if i believe that you can you uh, should not um, say uh, you can is you cannot uh, say lie you cannot speak lie it is my individual morality but if you are someone that it is it does not matter to you to speak lie right so i cannot uh, force the my morality on the uh, work on my judgment so he said that the reviewer may apply particular moral standard with uh, which he likes or familiar with but we must remember that the moral content of a work is not the whole content means my morality cannot be the same with your morality so it cannot be the standard uh, criticism other special studies like this i deal with something uh, something taken from the work studies for example have been made out chaucer's comment on medieval sciences shakespeare's understanding of the law of milton's geography and hardy's place names the critic can be familiar with all the th all these things but his business as a critic is to discuss the assimilation of all of them into work so he said that uh, the other uh, things like chaucer's comment of medieval sciences of shakespeare's understanding the law or milton's geography and hardy's place names this the critic can be familiar with these things but his business as a critic is to discuss the assimilation of all the work into them then his next famous work is poetry a note on ontology by john crowdenson so um, in criticism in you know that he said that how a critic should be a good critic or how the a critic should follow the uh, particular way how to criticize and in this work he talked about how you should uh, do ontology and you should uh, do ontological criticism and some main ideas here in the essay poetry and ontology a note on ontology is to assert the ontological status of poetry ransom divides poetry into two broad groups and one groups that talk about things so he mainly uh, divide in three groups let's see them another group that talks about idea and the third group comes out the blending of these two qualities so first he divided in two groups and then the third groups is the blending of two groups first is platonic poetry second is pla uh, sorry first is physical poetry second is platonic poetry and third is metaphysical and are the names of the groups respectively physical poetry so what you mean by physical poetry the physical poetry uses physical things or objects the poets are concerned with material and surface appearances so when 
द पोएट इज कॉन्सर्न उथ द सार्फेस एपियरेंसेस दे यूज द फिजिकल ऑब्जेक्ट्स और थिंग्स अपियरेंस बट नॉट द आइडिया इट कॉन्क्रीट फ्रॉम फॉर्म ऑफ पोएट्री लैंग्वेज इज प्लेन लिटरेरी एंड साइंटिफिक इट इज पोएट्री ऑफ थिंग्स दे प्रेजेंट नॉट द आइडियाज बट थिंग्स बट द things are represented in language and physical poetry is pure poetry because it has visual context it is too realistic and it does not maintain interest so he said that physical poetry mean when you see when you uh, take something in uh, through visual through your eye through senses like you see a flower and you write a poem about it you see a, a tree and you write a, a poet about it so it is too realistic you there is no con, um, no uh, what i can say no idea you what you see you just write so this is physical poetry then he talk about platonic poetry what is platonic poetry platonic poetry mean idea so when you deal with the ideas the abstract things like kids a uh, gracian art platonic poetry deals with the ideas not with objects but the platonic poetry does not concern with the real poetry ransom says that romantic and victorian poems are platonic because platonic poetry's main aim is to express ideas philosophy truth and morality or ode on a gracian art by keats is an example of platonic poetry because it destroys images because there is no image you have to think like so uh, destroys the images so it is abstract and it is too idealistic but ransom is against both platonistic and platonic and physical poetry out of them blending of these two poetic qualities the third form of poetry comes which he calls metaphysical poetry so he both rejected the physical poetry and uh, which uh, deals with object and uh, the platonic poetry which deals with ideas but he talked about the metaphysical poetry you know what is metaphysical poetry right metaphysical poetry and some favors metaphysical poetry in metaphysical poetry there is a fusion of reason and feeling so there is a fusion of reason and feeling hits and minds and emotion and intellect ransom found the intelligence in using concepts in metaphysical poetry concept is a type of indirect metaphor which uses far fetched images in the 17th century you know dan then harbert marlo the 17th century the poets like dan cowley used the concept to expose both physical and platonic poetry so he said that it is the best poetry because they, there is a fusion of reason and ideas so it is best kind of poetry um, as per ransom then criticism as a pure speculation so i am just um, doing in hurry because uh, there are lots of thing i have to uh, teach so i can make the ppt clips but i try to make it uh, more informative so that e if you go through this pdf you don't have to go anywhere else right so if you um, cannot understand the uh, video in one go you can watch it twice or thrice but i assure you that if you watch this video fully you can you don't have to go in any other anywhere else so let's see other concept by him ransom views that criticism is a pure speculation or assumption firstly he talks about two types of criticism first is physiological and second is moral criticism physiological criticism pretends to be scientific but it fails moral criticism tends to prescribe prescribe rules or ideology both of these forms of criticism go beyond the text the they disregard the text as self sufficient unified whole and ransom as a new critic denounces biographical psychological moral criticism he says that to make criticism text is self sufficient and there is no need point of the um, out of out the historical background and personal impression and since the text is autonomous so i had told you before in my new criticism video introduction of my new criticism video for ransom ontological criticism is the best kind of criticism which tells the essence to find 
द बींग अफ टेक्स और पोएम बंटोलजिकल क्रिटिसिजम उ मेन क्रिटिसिजम बेस्ड आप on the ontology of text it is believed that text has its own ontology and that is its own existence in any poem there is interaction between structure and texture so let's know his important uh, concept which is structure and texture therefore structure and texture are two main elements for critics since structure is a central logic in a text and therefore the paraphrasable code so structure means the paraphrasable code in a text that is structure and by paraphrasable codes we mean the core element of any work of art which is subject to paraphrase what remains when texture of a work of art is deleted in paraphrasable code so what is texture texture is local local details which refers meter assonance rhyme metaphor and other linguistic devices ransom's ontological criticism accepts that a text has its own essence which is sufficient in itself so a text has its own essence and which is sufficient in itself for inter interpretation and this mode of criticism does not allow the critic to go beyond the text the same thing ransom also talks about two types of discourse poetic and scientific poetic discourse is democratic but not auto uh, authoritative here author's voice is dominant free interpretation is possible in poetic discourse as a result there is no single meaning since there is irony ambiguities in poetry each reader interprets them differently and multiple meaning come but scientific discourse is authoritative and where there is absolute meaning and as a pure new critic he does not believe in single meaning ransom disregard the way critics to criticize the text based on already existing mood so he you know that he criticize the way then he says if some conventions are repeated there would be no progress in literature so good critics should possess innovative experiment and new techniques so you have all have to uh, know that a text can have multiple meaning summing up ransom believe that poetry has both texture and paraphrasable code but separation between them is impossible there should be merge of texture and uh, structure texture mean uh, the imagery the metaphor simile used in it and structure mean the paraphrasable code what the you can paraphrase that makes poetry an ontological being so his uh, let's know his works poems uh, about god which published in 1919 then chills and fever which published in 1924 then grace after meat which published in 1924 two gentlemen in bonds which published in 1926 god without thunder which published in 1931 the world's body which published in 1934 the new criticism his famous work which published in 1941 a college timer of writing which published in 1943 poems and essays 1955 so that's all if you like my video please uh, show your support by subscribing my channel i here try to bring all the information so it can be sometime uh, boring but if you try to look this video from uh, till the end you can understand what ransom trying to say and why he is very much important in new criticism so thank you and thank you for giving your time thank you very much